sure is going to be a long job. Well, it's getting a lot more in balance now, every piece I take off. So it's spinning more or less balanced, it's just a funny shape. This big flat here. And uh, so it's taking a long time. Got a big chunk here. And I don't really want to lose that. It's pretty loose. So I'm going to flood it with CA glue and shavings. Really pack it in tight. Hopefully I can save that bit. Give it some CA to start with. Let that soak right down into the crack. Luckily, I've got quite a few shavings. I'm really going to pack these in tight. And then keep adding CA. Pack a few more in. job big split down here as well but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it if we come to it Then I'll give your hands cramp and we'll see how it goes. Uh, by the way, this was 18 kilos or around about a 40 pound mark when I started it. And it's going to be a quite a lot less when I finished it. a little negative rake on this scraper and uh, it just helps prevent getting a catch because there's lots of nasty edges where I could get a catch in there etc so that's helped a lot I'm still only going at just over 200 revs I'm in no hurry at all okay I've got to get some weight off this massive chunk of olive and the only way to do it is start hollowing it so it's got to be turned around so this end fits on the lathe now I'm denied about how to do this because 
it's not big enough here obviously to put a mortise or tenon on of a decent size so my idea is and I don't know if it will work if it works I recommend it to you if it doesn't ignore me I've got a couple of pieces of plywood that are fixed together and that's going to go I made a hole in the middle so I can line it up with the centre mark on there so that's going to go on there like so I'm going to put masses of glue round there and under there and then if I can find it I'll screw the face plate to it the tail stock will come up so that will be on for most of the hollowing out as much as I can anyway so with a bit of luck it will work watch this space well, it appears to be holding ok um, just got to find some sort of level here now there's quite a bit of nasty stuff there which is just rotten wood basically but it's all going to be hollowed out anyway so hope it doesn't go too far set up the hollowing rig now and my favourite hollowing tool by my mate Wagger he made me this and uh, I've used it a lot and I haven't turned the tip round yet it's still as sharp as the day I had it so I'm giving this a go Well, every pass I make now, it's getting a, a lot more solid. I'm nearly onto solid wood there now. <laughs> That's nearly gone there. So uh, I've got the revs up to a mighty 250. feel solid wood
next step modeling clay resin I'm not wasting time showing all how to mix resin up Once that's dry, I might uh, dig a bit of this. Hang on. Dig a bit of this crack out and uh, put some water in. That's going to take another day to dry, so I can find something else to do while that's happening. Right, it's been a few days, and um, I'm going to try and fill this crack in because it's quite a big crack all the way through. I haven't finished hollowing it out yet, take no notice of that. If I can turn it round, there you can see, I've dr even dremeled it out, give me a bit more width and I'm going to fill this with black resin as well. First though, I'm going to Put a bit of modelling clay up the inside and uh, that will stop it seeping through I hope. It worked on the, the big bit at the around the bottom. So make a bit of a barrier with this modelling clay. And the good thing is it will turn off quite easily. I'm not bothered about this big chunk here, it's just this split that I want to sort out. Just smear it onto the, the edge and it tends to give it a good seal then. I can't afford to waste the resin, it's expensive stuff. I'll show you what I'm going to do on the other side in a sec. I'll just put that on roughly for now and I'll finish that off later. Let's have a look. That's better. What I'm going to do on, on this side is make a sort of channel. We've got a piece of perspex. I'm going to put that over there like so and modelling clay all the way around it and then I'm going to pour the resin in from the top okie dokie right yet another change of plan the modelling clay doesn't like sticking to this perspex stuff so I'm just making the tunnel with the clay itself as you can see that there that's just going to get poured in just finish this top off trial and error all the time I'm just getting the final shape on the outside now putting some finishing cuts on it's a little bit flat here this area just want to take it in very slightly so it's a very gentle curve all the way around um, and there's a little bit here a little ridge there just to take out these little holes here and there, I'm not going to fill those in, I'm going to leave those. Some have been filled, some haven't. You know, just leave it as it is. A little ridge up here as well, just wants a bit of a trim. So I'm going to get on with that with the uh, round nose carbide. And uh, then we can start sanding it down. Starting to put some sanding sealant on it now, and where does it bring the pattern out in this wood? The grain is beautiful. You can see the difference. Oh, 
wow this is going to look really nice especially with the black I mean you could call it dragon glass really mm. I put a couple of coats of sand and sealant on it after I'd rubbed it down and um, then I applied some Yorkshire Grip Microfine and uh, the polish I'm using this time, and I haven't given this a lot of use before uh, is this Montan Wax from Turner's Wood Products and um, it's really good stuff with a beautiful smell to it, lovely lemony smell to it and uh, so I have tried it before but I haven't really given it much of a go it's a very firm wax very firm but uh, it comes up very nice right that should be about dry now so I'll buff it up and uh, show you what it looks like Beautiful, isn't it? Because I haven't done round the uh, the tricky end just yet. Because I like to keep my fingers. I shall do that with a polishing mop, probably. The last sort of three inches. But as for the rest of it, wow. I'm so pleased with this. I don't care if anybody else likes it or not, actually. <laughs> I love it. Right, I've got it plenty of sand in sealer. Spent days and days sanding it down. Well, hours anyway. I've got a big polishing mop on the drill. And I'm just working some Yorkshire grit in at the moment. It's the only way I can do it on these rough edges. Right, it's had a bit of a polish up, and that will do. It's now time to part it off, which I'm not really looking forward to, but uh, I'll have to try and support it somehow. I'll put a bit of a support block there just to stop this end dropping, and I've also, hang on a sec, if you can see it. A block of wood down here just in case I mean I, I intend stopping before it breaks off but just in case that should help stop it slamming into the lathe I'm only going to cut so far I think and then uh, finish it off with a saw I've got it down to about an inch or so left in there, so I'm going to saw this off now. I'm not going to take any chances. Right, well, just going to attack this little nib with the uh, Dremel attachment and uh, then get the palm sander on it. It only took about 10 cuts of the saw and that was through. for the base I'll just give it a quick coat of polish I've just put a bit of sanding sealant on it that'll do nicely well it's just about finished 
after a few weeks because I had a bit of a lay off with a cracked rib but still well pleased with it I like the blacks and the reds that I've put into it main chunk of black down the bottom there and that seam this tiny bit of red as you go around there and more red inside there a couple of little bits there and uh, there's one more job I've got to do on it when I put the block of wood in to help stabilize it in the lathe when I was parting it off the woods made a couple of marks so there you go I've got to uh, sand that down and repolish it but as far as I'm concerned that's good enough to show you well pleased with it at its highest point it's ten and a half inches or 27 centimeters and the width is approximately 13 inches or 33 centimeters yep I'm quite pleased with that took a lot of work a heck of a lot of work but it's a beautiful piece of wood olive um, you never know what you're going to get it's like you in this country uh, quite common in this country I was really lucky to drop on a piece of you this big over here and uh, wish I could have another one anyway there you go viewer that's it I don't know what it's going to be used for put a load of sweets in that anyway I'll see you soon for the next one bye now